Hi again, everybody. Um, today's lesson is one that would be a lot different if we were in person. So I'm going to explain to you the parts that we would have done in person and then kind of go into you uh, what I go into what I want done with this by you over the next couple days. So um, this little plan is called Snapshot Autobiography. And the thing that's on your screen right now is something that I have also shared with you as a PDF on Classroom. It's a great little thing because it gets us thinking like historians. So normally what, what we do, the first day of this thing, we do this for about three days. Um, the first day, I have you guys do a quick free write, and I ask you to tell me the story of your birth. So if you think to what your family has told you about the day you were born, it's, it's just write down the story that you've heard, okay? Um, then generally you pair up and share with somebody, and then we start thinking about, how do we actually know this? Like, I know a little bit of the story of my birth and I heard some of it from my mom, some of it from my dad, but that's really all I know. Um, and I don't really have a lot of documentary evidence. I have a birth certificate, but other than that, I don't have a lot of evidence that the story of my birth is true. And it's worth wondering, would other people who were in the room, doctors, nurses, would they remember the story of my birth differently? So, we start thinking about this very simple thing, our own origin story, and about how it may or may not be accurate. Um, so what we do is pass out these directions then. And this is what you do uh, before the second day of the, of the class. Um, and I'm giving you guys a day to work on it yourselves. Um, this is a snapshot autobiography. So what you're going to do is kind of like do an autobiography of, of your life, which obviously is an autobiography. Um, and you're going to do it by taking a regular sheet of paper. Let me see if I can show this correctly. So take a regular sheet of paper, fold, fold. That's a trifold. Okay. On the front cover, you put your title and stuff. Now, if I were gifted at art, this would be a lot cooler, but I just kind of hashed it out. I am going to do one of these with you guys for real, but this is just to show you what it's like. So it's Boyle, my life at middle age, because I am a middle-aged dude. Back cover is about the author. So it's that author picture of you, right? You ever notice how like every author on their book, their picture is? Or? Yeah. Okay, so it's your about the author thing. You write, you know, Joe, Joe Boyle is a 45-year-old history teacher living in northwestern Ohio. He teaches in Toledo and enjoys lots of weird historical things. Okay, you're a little about the author thing. Now, that leaves you with four frames, right? One, two, three, four. So, pick... The first one is going to be your birth story, the actual birth story, and you need to interview somebody, and uh, not necessarily for the birth story, but you do need to interview at least one person about this. And let me go back to the directions real quickly. Okay, um, so here is exactly what I told you. Um, your autobiography has a title on your cover. Back panel has your about the author section. Then in the first of those, you're writing about your birth. The other three panels, you're going to write about other important events that shaped you as a person. So you're picking three other really important events. So I kind of know what I'm going to write about when I do mine to share with you guys later. Um, and it changes for me every year, which is kind of funny. So um, mine are going to be Boyle gets married. That's going to be one of the life-changing moments. Um, Boyle quits his job. I, uh, I wasn't always a school teacher and I used to work in journalism and stuff and uh, then I was in New York a week after 9-11 and everything changed for me. Um, and then Boyle goes to France. Uh, I went to France in 2012 and it was kind of a life-changing experience and career-altering experience for me. Um, and at, at age 45 I've certainly got a lot of turning points in life to choose from whereas uh, it might be a little more difficult for you guys to, to pick something at 16, 17, 18. Um, so you pick three other events, you write a narrative, a story describing what happened. Um, and maybe you describe the whole thing, um, in, include enough details to, to kind of sell the story and illustrate each, illustrate each event with a small hand-drawn picture. 
Now, for one of the events that you wrote about, you're going to find somebody else who remembers it. So maybe one of your events is like something that you did in sports, some kind of athletic event that you were part of. And um, you want to talk about the, the time that, you know, uh, Rogers beat Springfield or something in, in volleyball. And you want to write that story. Find a teammate, find a coach that you can social distance with or interview over email or over uh, Zoom or Skype or something or FaceTime um, and get their version of the story. So when you do this, you want to make sure you're getting their version. Don't say, hey, you remember that time we were at Springfield? Remember when we won that game? You remember how I was like the big star in that game? You remember, you remember how? Don't give them their, your version of it. Ask them an open-ended question. So like the example they have here is, Mom, do you remember when Jane and I started becoming friends in fifth grade? Can you tell me what you remember about what we met? And your mom might have a different remembrance of that moment than you do. Um, in the case of the volleyball game, you might be like, you know, to your friend and say, hey, you remember that game at Springfield when we were sophomores? What do you remember about that game? And that way you're not poisoning your source with your own memories. You're getting their, un their unvarnished truth. Take really careful notes of the interview. Pay attention to which parts of their story are different from your own. Make sure you thank them for being part of this. And then fill in a form like this that I will put online for you so you can fill it in digitally. Or if you want to do it on paper and take a picture and send it to me, that's okay too. So that's the assignment. I hope this makes sense to you guys. I hope it sounds at least marginally like fun to you. And I'm really looking forward to seeing these with you guys. Take care. Bye.